good, buddy. We're good. Where where are you? Are you in Mumbai or where are you? Yeah, we are at home. Just uh, trying to get through, man. It's it's been difficult. It's been um, intense. You know, all over yeah. the world, it's been quite tough. Mm. Um, what's what's been happening in the UK? What's the situation like now? Mate, we're exactly the same. We're in lockdown. We are completely locked down. Um, I've not been up to much. Uh, we've got two kids running around, but luckily we don't live in the city, so we're not stuck in an apartment like a lot of people. Uh, oh, we, yes. We've got space, so we've got garden. We opened the swimming pool today, um, so we're very we're very lucky that we've got space. But um, it's tragic what's happening, huh? Tragic, tragic, tragic. I know, I know, I know. Sweet, you're at Wentworth, aren't you? Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a nice garden out here. I mean, I'd love to be hitting golf balls, but uh, we've been told we're not allowed to. All the golf courses are, are closed, so I do a bit of chipping in the golf in the um, in the garden. But but that's about it. Have you got space where you are? Actually, you know, we we do have space. We uh, we went away to a farm mm. uh, before everything got got uh, intense. So we've been lucky. We actually have been in in decent space ourselves, so we can walk around just within the compound and. Yeah, as I was just gonna say, just be grateful. You don't, you don't mm. know what people are going through. Just being locked in, and, and, and I, I, I can feel for them. I see people just trying to get through these days. It's it's tough. It's tough to watch. But I mean, in terms of you and in terms of your missus, you're obviously incredibly high profile, and you mm. would be on the road now. I mean, I'd be in India now, commentating and being on a, on a, on an airplane every day, going from ground to yeah. ground. How nice is it yeah. though, from from a family's perspective, to be able to spend Good amount. I suppose I should ask you, Mrs. I shouldn't be asking you this <laughs> to be spending time with each other all day, every day. No, it's been wonderful. It's been actually it's it's the longest we've spent together um, since we got married. Since we've been together, actually. So really? I know it's it's not yeah it's not ideal. We've never been in one place for this long. Um, yeah. It's bizarre, but yeah, that's been the case. It's it's not a good thing to you know sort of single out the situation as something that. You got an opportunity uh, to. Spend. It is what it is. I mean, we are looking at the positives. We are being careful. You're being cautious, but at the same time, you have to appreciate family time. I was just going yeah, to say, yeah. usually at this time, I'd probably be saying hello to you in Chennaswami or some of the other stadiums. Yeah, exactly. Not on Instagram, exactly. right? So, and yeah, these are strange times. It is, and they say that in the UK, it could be, if the public don't behave themselves, it could be a June lockdown. I mean, that's stuck in your houses until June to get rid of um, uh, the peak wow. of what's happening at the moment. I mean, and, and you say, we have, at least we have space. A lot of people don't have space. So, crikey, I just hope people behave for three weeks, four weeks, try and just do whatever they can to get through it, and then and then hopefully we get through the, through the rest of it. What are you missing most about not being able to be footloose and fancy free? Nothing. You're not missing anything? Nothing. Apart, I just from, your bar brother, apart from your barber. <laughs> my brother messaged me uh, two days back and he was like, I'm dying. Um, so in our place in Gurgaon, uh, near Delhi, we have a gym in the basement. He's never used the gym. And now he's in the gym every day and you know, he's understanding the importance of that gym. So he told me I can't I can't take it anymore. I need to go out. You know I, I'm just getting stuck in the house and it's difficult. Uh, he's with family as well, but you know people are just not used to being home. Yeah, and that's when I told him, "Welcome to our side of the world. Welcome to our life. This is our life every day." So absolutely, <laughs> we, we are in isolation every day. That's true. Jeez, especially yeah. especially you guys in in uh, in India. I mean, at least here we can get out, and I think you love touring England and Australia and stuff. We can go to the beaches and. The, but I mean, in India, it's 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 quite intense, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But you know, to be honest, we're just grateful that we are home. We're in one place. You know, with all the travel restrictions now, imagine if we were still on tour and stuck in some country, and yeah, it could have been very very difficult for everyone around. You know, just stuck in different parts of the world. And um, I wanted to ask you, what's what's been the mindset of people in the UK? How are they dealing with the situation? How are they looking at things? And is there panic? Is there Sort of, uh, Mate, there has been there has been a reasonable amount of panic. I think people stockpiled for the first week or two um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't understand the situation at the moment. We live on the on the flight path at Heathrow, and you can still see some airplanes in the air. I saw uh, one of the airlines 
ground that they fleet recently. Um, yeah. British Airways were talking about uh, letting go of 30,000 people on leave at the moment. And so, I, I mean, I, don't, I still don't understand how they haven't completely closed the borders here yet. Um, when I was shooting that documentary a couple of weeks ago, there was quite a big outcry. I flew in from, where was I? I was in the way I flew up was Mumbai or Delhi. I flew in from somewhere and I walked straight through the border. No one's checking temperatures, at least in India. They were checking our temperatures. Before I even went into the um, uh, the hotel in Delhi, we had our temperatures checked, everything was being checked, but it was very lackadaisical here. And uh, apparently it's still the same way at the borders, which is, I mean, it's, it's crazy to think it's going on like that. Crazy. And the numbers are just going, they skyrocket. Oh, Skyrocket. That's great to hear. Honestly, our, our response has been quite quite good. Uh, I mean, yeah. apart from few people that you would have seen the videos who haven't really respected the guidelines being yeah. laid out, and I just don't understand how that happens. Because you know, if you're looking to if you're looking to address a larger issue, there's a thing of unity that mm. everyone should have. Which unfortunately, hasn't been the case with everyone. I think 80% of the people have taken it on board, but still, those 20% mm. can be a huge, huge issue. Uh, going forward, as you said, the spike is immense going into week three and four. So I just hope that yeah. people, you know, get get some sense into them and just. Stay Are you training? Are you training? You know, we uh, actually got all our stuff um, put into uh, a big a big car and and we got our stuff uh, here. Everything mm -hmm. that because I, I I knew that you know if this goes on for longer, you still need to be able to train, and so I've got my lifting Olympic bar and plates and. There's a little garden to run around and all right, email. Yeah. Oh, all right, email. <laughs> Me and Anushka have been training well. Yes. Hey, I've I've seen it. Don't call it an Olympic bar. You need to be calling it something because the last time I saw legs like yours, they were hanging outside the nest. Little little <laughs> pencil little pencil legs. <laughs> there they are. You know, it, <laughs> little pencil legs. <laughs> it helps. It helps when you got big legs legs like yours and you still pop a calf muscle. I've never popped my calf in my life. Hey, remember, <laughs> look, remember that. It, it looked like someone had shot me. <laughs> it was in Pune. I knew I was standing in slips and I was like, what the hell just happened to him? <laughs> so no no use of big legs if you can't run. I'm sorry. This is very this is very true. And, and what I'm actually going to say now, leave it to just leave it. Guys, me and Virat are having a conversation here. And I know that uh, there's, there's a lot of people who are very interested in this in this interview. We're just talking as friends, we're talking as buddies, and we're going to go back to 2009 now, we're going to talk about Bangalore, we're going to have some fun. This is just Verat and I having some fun. This is not for any journalist to take this on one way or another way to create ridiculous headlines. So, please, if you're going to do that, then it's obviously going to finish off any conversations between people who just want to give normal fans some content. So, just please, take the conversation. Um, Dude, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry about this big lecture because no one's heard you. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna That's go true. off anyway, so I tried. just carry on. Okay, I tried. I tried. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Listen, RCB. Yeah, go on. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about um, the bloke in the middle of the picture that I posted um, this morning on Instagram. There was a guy that I posted in between. That guy that's perfect and pure and has the most amazing beard uh, compared to this guy in 2009. Well, I don't, I don't recognize him anymore, to be honest. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Yeah, I know. I know. Good old days, but we had a lot of fun. We had amazing times together. I think uh, right from 2008. Mm. You came in 2009, didn't you? Yeah, 2009, was, I think, yeah, that was my first season, yeah. Yeah, 9 and 10, you were with us. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 2009 is when we really sort of um, got it going. We really hit off well from day one. And yeah, there were good times. I mean, you obviously came in as the star player, like the big KP and, you know, this uh, all over South Africa, brew, <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was fun. I remember all those days and... Playing with Jack and Dale and Mark Boucher as well. And we had uh, a we had uh, Raul, Raul in our team. We had yeah. Um, Anil Kumble, Raul Javed, Robin. Dale Stein. We had we had a gun team. Yeah. Manish yeah. came on board. Manish Pandey got a century in that season. Really got a century there at Centurion Park. Yep. Yep. 
You know who was the most... Uh, do you remember Jesse Ryder and uh, Rule of Pandemur? <laughs> You we cannot forget about both of them in that season. They were the highlight of that whole season. How can you forget both of them? That's true. They were bad news. They were bad oh. news together. Justice. They were for, they, a real fun of over. You gave him anything that looked like a bottle of wine and he just turned it to somebody who was, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was, I mean, the yeah, that was funny. Done, I can't really talk about them. Every, every single time, um, I get asked a question about you. I always refer to the questions, even though you were a bit of a, in yeah. 2009, you always sat next to the right players who you wanted to learn from the most. You had a, you had a very inquisitive brain when you were sitting next to the Callises, the Kumblays, the Drava. You just wanted to learn, didn't you? You just wanted to be the best player. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty pretty obvious, I mean, for a youngster having all of these people around yourself when you came and you were at the peak of your career and for me it was just an opportunity to just absorb, absorb as much as I can. If I wanted to go higher and higher, I just had to do it. So, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me. There, there's different ways you can look at the idea. Um, nowadays, there are a lot of youngsters who still ask those questions. Um, I'm not sure of the other teams, but the people that we interact with, the guys in the Indian team, they ask those questions which are um, you know the right question. So, yeah, it's it's basically how you look at things, and I always want to just be the best version of myself. And learning from you guys was a no-brainer. Did you think that you would become as good as you've become? Never. I was just talking to my coach the other day, two days ago. If someone told me twelve years ago you'll have these numbers after twelve years, I would have told them to get lost. No oh, that's chance. Amazing, huh? I mean, just God's been kind. If you if your if your mind's in the right place. If mm. you're thinking about the right thing, you have the right kind of vision mm. and to keep following regardless of all the noise around you, yeah. the results follow. If you yeah. look at the numbers and keep striving for the numbers, that goes down, everything is lost. So what, are you, how, what, what do you strive for now? Every time you come, you come out and bat, whether it be for um, uh, RCB or for India, what, like, are you just, you're just thinking end game is to win and how do I win this game? You're not thinking about anything. There's no other clutter. Not at all. Not at all. For me, the most important thing is how can I contribute to make my team win? Because that is what we started playing cricket for. Mm. We were really, very really small. So, yeah. I don't think why that intent should change, why that mindset should change. Mm. It hasn't honestly changed with me, you know. There's a lot of things that people try and create in India. They, they try and, you know, cook things up, stir things up. I'm, yeah. You have experienced that a lot when you were playing as well. So, yeah. it's it basically, you just have to block the noise. And whenever I go to bat now, I know, I understand that cricket is a small part of our lives. And I need to be able to make the most of the opportunity that I have in front of me. Yeah. And I have a larger responsibility now, you know, to be able to maintain this culture of fitness, of of taking the team in the right direction. And I mean, you just have to be grateful that you have this opportunity and you, know, you yeah. just need to make sure all your energy is in the right place to be able to do that. Where did your nickname Chiku come from? <laughs> Chiku actually came from, you know, MS has sort of uh, made my nickname famous from behind the stumps, in the stump mics people pick up. They call me Chiku actually like I'm their neighbor or something like that in India. They'll shout out, oh, Chiku wants border please. And I'm like, <laughs> I have a name, you don't know me, but you can't call me Chiku. <laughs> Jeez, so when this all finishes, you're gonna walk down the street, Chiku. Yeah, yeah I, I get called out uh, by the name of Chiku all the time. No one calls me Virat anymore. Either Kole or Chiku. That's it. It's amazing. Um, when I come to India, and they all call me Peter. I'm saying, who the fuck's Peter? <laughs> Peter. 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 <laughs> no, I got I got this nickname. Um, by uh, a coach we had in the state team, actually the Ranji Trophy, our first class teams. And I used to have big uh, cheeks back then. And I had in you, 2000... Sorry, I, sorry, I sorry, sorry. You used to have what? Big cheeks. Big cheeks? Cheeks, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for clarifying. I just, I didn't hear you correctly. <laughs> I had big cheeks <laughs> back then. Yeah. In 2007, I, I thought I'm losing, I'm losing hair. My my hair's uh, shedding. I'm having a massive hair fall. So I got my hair cut really short, like yours now. I look like a clown, and I have big ears. So my 
my cheeks stood out and my ears stood out and um, so we used to have this comic uh, in india like a comic book when we were growing yeah. up called champak it was called champak yeah and there was a, there was a rabbit in that comic um, yeah. that character's name was chiku so the coach called me chiku the rabbit because i had big ears where came it from and then people started taking it up and you know it went up to god knows where brilliant brilliant and, mm. and tell me um rcb a lot of people since this thing went out I mean, i've had such a busy phone in the last 24 hours i mean it's crazy why and one of the well, one of the big things was they want to ask why have rcb not won a title yet i mean we get asked it all the time we have to try and explain it in the commentary box it's like oh my god jeez just stop asking the same question <laughs> Do you get sick of the same yeah, questions? Look, when you have um, when you have in in like history in the previous seasons as well, when you've had the biggest players who played for RCB, obviously there's going to be much more attention on the team. Now you see, uh, even with this team, myself, AB, Gail had played recently as well, and you know yeah. all these great big players have played for RCB. So we're always going to be more in focus. But you know, we actually spoke about it. We've reached. Um, three finals we haven't mm. won either single one of them we reached three semi finals but um, yeah those things are irrelevant <laughs> those things are irrelevant <laughs> as uh, you know till the time you don't uh, win that title so look we feel the same as everyone to be honest you know we we mm. keep talking about the team that we have we even when we had the best teams we've just not been able to do it but yeah that's that's one of our main goals we actually deserve to win a title to be honest because is um, that something that you are focused on now you um we'll move on to indian cricket in a minute but is that is that something that i mean you've achieved almost every single thing in the game your numbers are crazy is do you really want to win an ipl you know actually i've realized something that to go after something so badly it it, it keeps running away from you and i remember all the times when we've done well in rcb we've never thought of whether we're going to win the ipl or whether yeah. we're going to reach the semis or knockouts or anything like that but it's just that added pressure whenever we've played in the recent past we've just thought this is the season this is the season and you know it's just it's just blown us all over the place so i think it, we just need to get that joy back and at yeah. this stage of my life to be honest you know i i give everything that i have on the field how old are you now like i'm going to be 32 this year 32 yes sir jesus okay no i wouldn't have guessed that <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you're 38, yeah. 39, somewhere around there. 31. I'm, I'm 88 born. So, how old am I now? <laughs> I don't. I can't even count. I was shit at math. <laughs> There's the headline tomorrow. Virat doesn't know how old he is. <laughs> I'm 31. Okay. I'm 31 at the moment. If that's as bad as it gets, then we've done really well in this uh, in this session. Um, I'm 31. 31. 31. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we get on to Indian cricket, and we talked about your transformation from 2009 to the person that you are now, and and how.